Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here, and I just wanted to do a quick Q and A. Um, Brad Barry asks for uh, um, evangelistic tips, uh, tips for ministry, evangelistic ministry. Um, it, it, it's it's good. It's a, and it's a good question. Um, it, it's and it's even better that um, uh, one desires to preach the gospel, um, desires to um, share the word of God. Um, the desire to share the word of God isn't something that you um, think of on your own. Um, believe me, the Holy Spirit, believe the word of God, the Holy Spirit most definitely puts that desire within you because uh, to will and to do is his good pleasure. Amen. Um, Philippians uh, chapter 4 clearly shows us that, Paul shows us that uh, both the deed and the desire come from God. Um, but having said that, knowing that the uh, desire um, to minister the word of God comes from the Lord, um, not everyone has that desire to preach, to um, to share the word of God um, in such a way, especially in such a way as this. Some people are very camera shy. Some people won't put themselves on the camera. Um, I haven't seen many of your faces, um, probably most of your faces I've never seen. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. I, I would love to see your face. Um, so at any rate, um, it's good though uh, to have that desire. And uh, so to Brad and to anyone else that has the desire, let me share this. Um, the most um, significant and most practical way to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people is to sit down and to read from the Word of God and then expound upon it as the Holy Spirit leads you and uh, um, expound upon it uh, from... Um, I should say you just expound upon it as the Holy Spirit leads you. That's the best way to expound upon the Word. Uh, learning how to do biblical exposition. Um, you can teach someone how to, um, um, shall I say, you can teach, you can learn how to interpret Scripture. Uh, hermeneutics um, is the art of Bible interpretation. Um, but that simply just gives you guidelines. Uh, understanding the Scripture is something that only the Holy Spirit can give you. Uh, the Apostle Paul is clear in teaching that in First Corinthians, um, <clears throat> and that uh, this is a spiritual truth and spiritual food and spiritual drink and and uh, and so. Only a spirit-filled believer can really understand the Word of God and apply it. So as the Holy Spirit leads you, expound upon the Word. Uh, the Lord, um, for this particular um, response, has uh, instructed me to read Romans 8. And uh, I'm going to read um, Romans 8, and I'm going to begin uh, in verse 31. Now, as he spoke of um, predestination and before that and begins to expound upon the doctrine of um, the election of the children of God, um, Paul goes into this um, short discourse here, starting in verse 31. Um, and uh, before I read, I always pray and I say, Father, have your way. I pray that you bless the word to our spirit. And that you bless the hearers, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and verse 31. And uh, I'm going to read it in uh, William Tyndale's translation. In the Tyndale translation, beginning in verse 31, it says, What shall we say then unto these things? If God be on our side, 
who can be against us? Hallelujah. Which spared not his own son, but gave him for us all. How shall he, not with him, give us all things also? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's chosen? It is God that justifieth. Who then shall condemn? It is Christ which is dead, yea, rather, which is risen again, which is also on the right hand of God, and maketh intercession for us. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or anguish, or persecution, or hunger, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, and are counted as sheep appointed to be slain. Nevertheless, in all these things, we overcome strongly through his help that loved us. Hallelujah. I like that. Yea, and I am sure that neither death, neither life, neither angels, nor rule, neither power, neither things present, neither things to come, neither height, neither loath, loath, nor depth. The King James translators changed that to depth. Loath. Uh, just uh, the, the the language was morphing at this time. The English language was still morphing. Um, neither any other creature shall be able to depart us from the love of God, showed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so... Um, Again, listen to this here. Uh, this is good, Brad. This is now interpreting and then applying that application. Who shall separate us from the love of God? All right? There isn't anything that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The love of God, all right, makes us inseparable, all right? We cannot be separated from the love of God, all right? We can be uh, separated from his presence, though. And see, we need to understand that. We need to understand that. And you'll notice in this list of things that cannot separate you from the love of God, what's missing. There's one thing missing. The only thing that can separate you from God is sin. And so sin creates a separation, and we know that. Adam's sin caused all of mankind to fall into a separation of state from God. But um, in spirit, we are united with him by his Holy Spirit, and we are given a heaven-sent spirit, now an oath and born from on high. We have now a born-again, perfectly sinless spirit. Our spirit is sinless, and you need to know that. The spirit that the Lord gives you, okay, um, people like to take Jeremiah seventeen nine and say, Oh, the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, that's the unregenerate heart. Because the heart that God gives, Ezekiel 36, is not corrupt. You can't tell me that God is putting a corrupt heart in you, a deceitful heart. So you're born again for a reason. That's a spiritual change within. That's why you now desire to preach the gospel. That's why you now desire to live for the Lord. And so it's, this is what being born again is all about. But this is all a work of the Holy Spirit within us. And so it is the word of God. Um, and then the spirit of the Lord who helps us to understand and expound upon his word. Um, but studying the Word of God is most important because if you don't study the Word, you won't know the Word. You won't um, have the Word stored in this computer of a brain that God has given to us. And so um, it's just absolutely amazing how the Word of God works in the mind of a believer, somebody who is born again and somebody who has surrendered to Him. So it's a work of the Lord. It's a work of the Lord from front to back, from beginning to end. Um, so when you read the Word of God, 
uh, you begin to comprehend it, you begin to understand it, you can begin to expound upon it and share it with people. So, number one, um, read the Bible. Let the Bible speak first. Then, number two, give your spiritual interpretation of that passage. All right? And share that as the Lord lays upon your heart. As you believe God has shown you, so do. Um, you can't do any wrong to the Word of God. The Word of God will explain itself to the, to the mind of those that need to hear it. Um, the Word of God is able to save a soul in and of itself. It doesn't need any help, but we need it in order to adequately and accurately share the truth from God to mankind. And so read the Word of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the um, proper words to expound upon it, to um, teach it, uh, to explain it to people that can understand it, and, uh, and then pray and ask the Lord to touch their hearts. Um, I don't ask people, Brad, one of the things I don't do is I don't ask people to, I don't invite people to um, pray a sinner's prayer of repentance um, because it, it, it's become, it has become over the centuries um, a, um, a religious practice. And people will do it because they think they have to do that. I just tell people, just surrender to the Lord. All you have to do is just surrender. All you have to do is just come to that point where you say, I don't want control anymore. Uh, I, I'm messing it up, and I want you to have your way, Lord. Have your way, have your way. I surrender. I believe that you're a God. I believe that you lived, you died, and you rose again three days later. And I believe that you did that so that I can be saved, that I can be born again and filled with your spirit. So please do all of that and show yourself to me. Um, when you begin to explain things to people, like that and simplify the message um, you're preaching the gospel and you don't need to preach 1611 King James English to preach the gospel to someone because there are some people that just aren't going to understand 1611 King James English you know you just need to explain the word of God to people and tell them the truth look yo home homeboy homie you know you want to reach the people on the street. You want to say, what's up? You know, you know, you give it up to Jesus. You know, surrender it to Christ and uh, just trust him. It's that simple. Um, and it really, the gospel isn't more simple than that. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All right, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So uh, um, pretty much uh, just preaching the gospel and... Uh, um, that's pretty much all you need to do. Sit down, pray, read, and expound, and let the Word of God do its work, because the Word of God is what saves, and the Word of God is what changes, molds, shapes all of us that believe. So uh, the Old Testament saints had the Old Testament, uh, New Testament saints had both, and uh, we are blessed beyond degree. So um, thank the Lord, praise him. Uh, thanks for your question, Brad. I hope that gives you an answer. And uh, set your camera up like I do, you know, or however you do it. Um, you got a tripod and you want to do it professionally, um, however the Lord leads you. Sit down, read the Word of God. Try to keep it under 15 minutes. Attention spans on YouTube are very short. So, um, uh, but uh, yeah. There are some that will listen to your whole message. So I hope and pray that you listen to this and that you'll be blessed by it. And I uh, hope and pray that God will encourage you all to preach the gospel. To preach the word, 2 Timothy 4.2. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hallelujah. God bless you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions. Keep them coming, and have a great day. In Jesus' name.